Lighthouse is a non-denominational church located just a few miles from Glasgow, Kentucky on the Edmonton Road. The Shepherd's House family invites you to Bible study on Sunday at 9 a.m., worship service at 10.30 a.m. on Sunday, and the Sunday evening service at 6 p.m. Midweek service at the Shepherd's House is Wednesday at 7 p.m. The Shepherd's House family cordially invites you to any of these services. We're going to be getting into the Word of God here in just a moment. And I want to welcome those that are joining us by TV, by the Internet, by Internet radio, and everything that the Lord has blessed us with. i got some things going to be sharing out of the Word of God, and this message is going to be a little bit different today. Uh, this is some things the Lord has laid on my heart. going to do a little teaching, a little preaching today. And the Lord's been dealing with me about the story of Joseph and his coat of many colors and how this is a lot like the church today that, uh, you know, the Lord blessed us and he has highly favored the church over all of his creation. And there's one thing we need to understand, there's enemies of the church that are out there today. And I'm not just talking about ISIS and I'm not just talking about uh, the religious fanatics of the world, but I'm talking about the devil is out to try to destroy the church. But we know he cannot do that. Amen. We know that we are victorious. We know we've read the back of the book. And hey, guess what? We win. Amen. Praise God. We're going to be delivered out of this place. But there's things that we're going to have to go through while we're here on this side. And the devil is doing everything he can to come against you, to discourage you, to distract you, to get your mind off of the Lord, and to cause you to believe your prayers are not being answered, cause you to believe that God has just dropped you and left you in this time of a, of a situation and maybe for the season that you're going through. But we know that's not right. But we look back into the Word of God and we can see that even the most highly favored people of the Lord had to go through some hard times. Any of you going through any hard times now? Do you know of somebody that you really love that's going through a hard time? Don't get dismayed. Don't get discouraged. Unfortunately, this is just normal. But the good thing about it is this only comes for a season. It's not here to last forever. I had a good Christian friend of mine make this statement one time, and I've repeated it many times. The, the most loved phrase that there is in the Word of God uh, is this. It came to pass. <laughs> it didn't come to stay. Thank God for that. Look over to somebody this morning beside you and say, it only came to pass. Amen. There's a better day ahead. Amen. There's a better time ahead. I know the Lord's going to lift us up and bring us out while we're here on this side, but there's a time that's better than anything we can ever imagine, amen, that we have waiting for us over on the other side. Eyes not seen, ears not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. What God has in store for those that loves him. He didn't say for those that were filthy rich. He didn't say for those that were highly educated. It was for those that love loves him. That brings everything down to a level spot. I'm thankful that the ground is level at Calvary today. You don't have to be connected with a politician. You don't have to be married to the preacher. Amen. You don't have to be a child. Amen. Of a great evangelist. You just have to know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior. Believe that he is the Son of God. That he did resurrect from the grave. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Making inner session for whom so ever will let him call on the name of the Lord uh, and he shall be saved. Uh, I'm so thankful for the promises uh, in the word of God uh, and the surety that I've got a place uh, better than this place. Amen. I got a mansion that will make the Taj Mahal look like an outdoor toilet. Amen. We're going to a place, uh, amen, where there'll never be any sorrow. There'll never be a tear ever be shed. Uh, your heart will never break. Uh, you will never get discouraged. I cannot even imagine uh, never being discouraged, uh, never being scared, uh, never being tempted, uh, never being tested. Uh, won't ever have the flesh uh, to bother me anymore and won't ever have your flesh to bother me anymore. 
I'm just saying that out of fun. Amen. We won't have anything to ever bother us anymore. I can't imagine that. Can you imagine that, Teresa? Never having anything to ever bother us anymore. Can you imagine not having an enemy anywhere? All your enemies are going to be bound and thrown into the lake of fire and all the old things are going to be passed away. And behold, everything is going to be new. Amen. When we drink the new wine in God's kingdom with Jesus sitting at the master's table, I'm telling you, I'm going to have me a fit. Amen. They'll have to hog tie me. I'll be that one of squeeze and a shouting and having me a fit knowing that I'll never, ever, ever have to say goodbye to my loved ones. I'll never have to worry and have stress and there'll never be a bill in my mailbox. Thank God I won't have one up there. Amen. Everybody that loves me going to come see me. Amen. It won't be charging me for anything. All's going to be free. We're going to have us a time when we get to glory. There won't be any stress. Amen. In business. There won't be any stress in church. There won't be any stress in everything. I can't imagine being relaxed for 30 minutes, let alone in eternity. Amen. We're living in a time now. There's not too many people relax. So much stuff that's going on. Amen. And the devil is fighting hard. Amen. To come against the church. I want to show you some things here in the Word of God. Amen. About Joseph and his life way before the church ever came into existence. Amen. There was a life of a man that reminds me so much of God's elect and what God's elect is going through today as we speak. And this happened to a man many years ago. and His enemy was his brothers. If you're in church, the enemies you'll have will be the people you go to church with sometimes. Or your family. Amen. But the devil is your main enemy that's going to be fighting, and don't you get mad at your brother and sister because we've all failed, haven't we? Go ahead and nod your head with you. See how much that better that makes you feel. Amen. Confess your faults one to another and pray one for another. The effectual fervent and prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Amen. <laughs> so, see, I helped you to confess. Some of you wouldn't confess because you was chicken. You was afraid somebody would see you nod your head. But we've all failed. Amen. He that is guilty of one point of the law is guilty of all. So how can I point a finger at you because you told a lie and I ate too much? Amen. So everybody has let the devil use him at one time or another. I'm not going to ask you to hold your hand up today. I'm just going to pretend everybody in here, including me, has got, my, got, got our hands up, and I'm going to make this statement. The devil has used every one of us uh, as a tool sometime in the past. We didn't know he was using us, but he used us through ignorance. Amen. If we have any problems, it's because lack of knowledge. Amen. And every time the Lord gives me a revelation, it's usually how sorry that I am and <laughs> how that I've laid him down. And boy, what a revelation to get. Then I know what hypocrite to work on. It's always got quiet. Now you work on your hypocrite, and I'll work on mine. We'll be in good shape, won't we? I wasn't planning on this going this way today. But every one of us has been used by the devil at one time or another because we were ignorant and unlearned. Amen. And we didn't know any better. But when we come to the light, then we know better. Then we're going to be held accountable when we come to the light. So what I'm trying to say is Joseph's brothers was used by the devil mightily, and they didn't have an idea that the devil was using them. But I want you to know the devil has come against mankind ever since the beginning, and anything, amen, that God exalts, the devil comes against. Amen. And I've tried to tell the people here at church, we need to pray for our ministry. We need to pray for our church and you need to pray for me like you've never prayed for me because I'm reaching more people right now and our ministry is than we have in over 30 years. Do you think the devil's going to say, bless them Lord. I'm proud of you. No, he's going to say, attack. There's no doubt my name's on the bulletin board in hell every morning. He may because the devil's not going to take you sitting down. And if you do anything for the Lord uh, to lift up the name of Jesus, the devil don't like no part of you. I can tell you that right now. Amen. If you're making money, he hates your money. If you got good clothes, he hates your clothing. If you got a good car, he hates your car. If you got your new deep freeze, it won't last for 13 months. It's got a 12-month warranty. 
Amen. The devil's going to do everything he can, amen, to attack, amen, and to tear up, amen, and to destroy. And anything that God has, amen, that's good, he's going to try to mimic it with something false and just blow it out of proportion, amen, and ruin it. And if you're not a threat for the devil today, we're going to give an altar call here in a little bit and let you come and get right with God. Amen, because your name needs to be on the bulletin board somewhere. Amen, on the bulletin board. If it's not at the top of the devil's list, it better be on there somewhere because if the devil don't hate you, you don't have any of God inside of you. I can tell you that right now. Amen, because the devil is the most jealous creature that you'll ever see in your life. He's full of jealousy, and he tries to get jealousy to rise up inside of families. Amen, brother against brother, and sister against sister, and mom against daughter, and so on and so forth. And then most of the time, it's because of envy and strife and jealousy. And we see it inside the church. I didn't mean to get into this. Amen, singing groups, amen, get jealous of one another. And preachers get jealous of one another instead of backing up and supporting one another. Amen. Amen, they point fingers and criticize uh, and put out, uh, amen, instead of trying to build uh, the kingdom of God and praying, Lord, uh, my brother's on his way up. Uh, blow the breath of the Holy Spirit on him and lift him higher so he'll reach souls. But no, we don't like that. We're going to criticize him. I wouldn't get on television if I didn't have no more hair in that and preach. Amen. Got to find some kind of fault. Uh, amen. Of some kind. Jealousy and strife. Uh, amen. Something to tear down. And uh, can I get on the denominations for just a minute? This denomination don't like that denomination because they disagree a little bit. But it's really not because of the uh, the doctrine that they don't see eye to eye on. It's just because they're not part of the same group. Amen. So this one ain't going to heaven, but we're the only ones going to make it. I don't want to get into all that mess. Uh, and that's where a lot of people are today. And the devil caused every blessed bit of it. Uh, and it all because uh, of jealousy. And the devil's been jealous uh, ever since he was thrown out of heaven. Uh, amen. He's been jealous uh, of God's creation. And because God showed favor, amen, over his church uh, by sending his son to bleed and down the cross uh, for fallen man to have a way to be reconciled back to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Through the blood of the Lamb and it's made the devil mad and he's jealous. He's mad at you just because you're saved. If you're a Christian, it don't matter whether you're doing something big or not. If you're born again by the Spirit of God and you love the Lord with all your heart, the devil hates the ground you stand on. And he's going to do everything he can because he's jealous of you, amen, to bring you down and to, and to try his best to, to destroy you. Jealousy is the green-eyed monster, amen, that tries to tear down and destroy everything. I wouldn't plan on getting into this, but the Holy Spirit's got me here. I ain't got the scripture read yet, but we'll get there after a while. But the devil wants to do everything he can. And the devil come against Joseph because Joseph was so favored by his father. Amen. Can I go ahead and say this? God loves you today. Does God love the lost man? Why, absolutely. Of course he loves the lost man. Does he love the drunkard and the whoremonger? Absolutely. Does he love the rapist and the child molester? Of course he does. Does he love all of those that have the spirit of Antichrist on them? Of course he does. He made every one of us. He loves every one of us. But I'm going to tell you the ones that he made the coat of many colors for, and that's the church. Amen. Because we've been blessed and highly favored. Amen. You don't see miracles happening down at the local bar. You don't see miracles happening, amen, with the pimp and the harlots. Amen. You don't see, amen, things being done in the spiritual realm around them. So we're blessed and highly favored, even though God loves everybody. The Bible says it's not God's will that any should perish, but that all should come to him in repentance. Is that not what the word says? Absolutely. So even those that don't believe in God, God loves them. He sent his son. If they'll just believe, they can become born again. And even though he loves them, they can then become favored. And then when we get favored, amen, the lost and the devil, amen, gets mad at us. And I know there's people today that resents the church, amen, because they know the church is blessed. And God will have a way of getting the church through every kind of trial and every kind of test that has ever came. I could tell you story after story after story that I've saw miracles happen right here in this church. 
even back at the time that we were under the construction of the church and building the church. The devil would fight, amen, and the Lord would open up another door. I had to go back three different times, and I asked the bank for money because it cost us more than we thought it was going to cost to build a church. I felt bad, amen. But see, people just kept letting me down, and things just kept changing. And the devil, I'm not going into all of that, but the devil just kept on working and working and working. But I saw some good things happen. I saw a young man healed right over here where, uh, by the steps there, right behind the piano. The carpet wasn't on the floor. The doors were, and wasn't even in church. Uh, at that particular time, there wasn't no sheetrock. Uh, but he got healed right over there. His mother came out here and said, Brother Jimmy, I need you to pray for my son. And she was crying. We anointed him with oil. I found a bottle of oil. It's good to have one around. And we laid hands on him and prayed for him, and the Lord healed him right there on the floor. Amen. One of the bricklayers, uh, uh, employees, got saved laying the brick uh, on the front part of the church. Uh, it'd be to your left when you come in the front door in that corner. Every time you go up that ramp, you think about that boy getting saved uh, about six foot off the ground, standing on top of one of those walkways that they got there. Amen. He got saved because the man that was laying the brick was a preacher, and he shared the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ uh, with a boy who's life was wrecked uh, and he'd been hooked on drugs. Uh, he believed the gospel and became born again uh, through the spirit and the power of God laying the brick right out here on the front of the church. Thank God. Uh, amen. His people has always been blessed uh, and highly favored. That's where he's going to have the miracles. Uh, amen. It's going to start coming to bout uh, and the devil wants to wreck the world. Uh, he wants to tear down and to destroy and anybody that's holding up the light uh, of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, you are an enemy of the devil uh, and he's jealous uh, and he don't like you spreading the sunshine and the good news. Uh, he don't like for you to get up and smile. Uh, amen. He wants everybody, amen, uh, to eat onions the night before you go to bed so you'll be frowning the next morning. I just said that out of fun. Whatever it is so you'll have a frown on your face. Well, Brother Jimmy, I can't help having a frown. Yeah, you can. Most of the time that you can. Did you know it takes more facial muscles a man to frown than he does to smile. That's why folks are always so tired. They're wore out. Amen. They went around with their lips stuck out like they've been baptized in pickle juice, uh, like they've been sucking on a raw lemon, uh, amen, or a raw persimmon. Uh, amen. Their lips stuck out. Uh, amen. Just like they ain't got a friend in the world. They don't have nothing to live for. Amen. They couldn't smile at all. Hello? Testing. One, two, three. Are we still connected? <laughs> Amen. I didn't hear an amen anywhere. I believe some of the oxygen left the room. Amen. Just hang on a minute. It'll come back in. Everybody went, <gasps> amen. So don't let the world catch you frowning this week. Put on a smile. Or, Brother Jimmy, I've had all these kinds of troubles. Welcome to the club. Amen. Join the club of the most hated. Amen. We're in this thing together. But I want you to know we're blessed and highly favored. Uh, and the devil may hate you. Some of the world may hate you. But Jesus loves you uh, enough. He died on the cross. Uh, amen. He loves you how much? How about this much? Uh, and then he gave up the ghost. But three days later, he come out of the grave. Hallelujah. And now he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Hey, man, I talked to him this morning. He was a feeling pretty good. Made me feel good when I got done talking to him. I'm glad I could cry out to the Lord. Hey, Amen. And he hears our prayer. Not because we're good, but because we believe. Hey, Amen. If we had to go by how good you are, the Lord smack you into tomorrow. Every time you went to pray, if you had to be good. I'm thankful, amen, that we've got grace and mercy that comes from God. Uh, amen, he don't want, he don't expect you, amen, to be above, uh, amen, being weak and having problems, but he does expect you to live right and do the best that you can. Amen? Amen. All right, I was going to read, wasn't I? All right, in Genesis, I got all shook up this morning. Genesis chapter number 39, verse number 1 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, brought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. And the Lord was with Joseph, and he was a prosperous man. And he was in the house of his master, the Egyptian. And his master saw that the Lord was with him, and that the Lord made all that he did to prosper in his hand. And Joseph found grace in his sight, and he served him, and he made him overseer over his house, and all that he had he put in.
into his hand. And it came to pass from the time that he had made him overseer in his house and over all that he had, that the Lord blessed the Egyptian's house for Joseph's sake. And the blessing of the Lord was upon all that he had in the house and in the field. And he left all that he had in Joseph's hand, and he knew not aught he had, save the bread which he did eat. And Joseph was a goodly person and well favored. Let's pray. Father, in the loving name of Jesus, we come before you again this day, thanking you, Lord, for this opportunity to preach your word, thanking you, Lord, for what we feel in our hearts. Father, thanking you, Lord, for what we know uh, that is to be real, Lord. I thank you, Father, uh, for your word that, that that's like a hammer that breaks the rocks into pieces. Uh, Lord, we know your word is like a fire, saith the Lord. I'm thankful today that your word is quick uh, and it's powerful and it's sharper than any two-edged sword. Father, I'm thankful that the anointing of the Holy Ghost, Lord, breaks uh, all the bondage, Lord, and breaks the yoke of bondage uh, and sets the captive free. Father, I ask you, Lord, to bless and to move in a mighty and a powerful way. I pray that you would touch the hearts of your children. I pray that you would move, Lord, on the hearts of everybody that's here at the shepherd's house this morning, no matter if they're rich or poor, if they're, no matter if they're strong or weak. It doesn't matter, Father, what color their skin is or what a nationality that they might be. And all of those watching the television and radio and watching by our church's website, Father, I pray, God, that you would just move uh, Father, Lord, on their hearts today and bless them and touch them. Anoint uh, our lips that we be able to speak the words of God with wisdom and power under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. And I pray that you would anoint the ears uh, of everybody here uh, that's under the sound of my voice. Uh, Father, that you would anoint their ears to be able to hear and to believe the word, uh, Lord, and that we would stand steadfast and unmovable. And Father, that we might not be tossed about by every wind of doctrine, but Father, that we might be moved by the infallible word of God. Father, we ask you to bless and to move in a powerful way. And Father, we thank you for your goodness and mercy. And it's in Jesus' loving name. We humbly pray and ask all these things. Joseph and Genesis chapter 37, verse number 3. His father made him a coat of many colors. Amen. There's no doubt. Amen. That Jacob loved all his sons. Amen. Exactly the same. God changed, amen, Jacob's name to Israel. Amen. Israel, or other words, Jacob, loved all his sons. Amen. But there was something that happened to Joseph. Amen. Joseph was just one of those kids, you know. Amen. That just simply seemed like loved his father better than anybody else. And I've got three sons, uh, and I love them all the same. Uh, amen. But the ones that seem like wants to hang around daddy a little more than the others, uh, you can't keep them just every now and then, not meaning to, having a little more favor and spoiling them a little better. I got five grandchildren and one on the way. I got every one of them spoiled right now. But the youngest one, I have ruined him. That's all he is to it. Amen. I have spoiled that boy. Amen. Rotten. It's pitiful how much I've spoiled him. I don't love him anymore than I do the other grandchildren. It's just he wants to hang around with Pa, and he cries when he can't get to Pa, and as soon as he sees Pa, he wants Pa. Now, how in the world can you turn somebody away like that? Hey, man, don't you just love grandkids to death? I wish I'd had mine before I did my kids. I'd had a whole lot more fun. Amen. And I thank God for them grandbabies. But what I'm trying to say is I love them all the same. But every now and then, you don't mean to. You just buy one a little more candy than you do the others. Amen. Not meaning to. Now, what are you trying to say? Would the other grandkids get jealous if they was there and saw it? They would. Absolutely. But see, Joseph's brothers, they were all there. They saw the favor, amen, that Jacob, amen, was giving, amen, to Joseph. And then all at once, the old man done something, amen, that just topped the cotton. I mean, he done something that just crossed the line. Amen, that's all there is to it. Amen, and in, in, in Genesis 37, amen, we see in the Word of God where uh, Joseph, amen, had a dream. Amen, and in his dream, amen, his other brothers, amen, 
Amen. And his father was going to bow down and serve him. Now, how do you think that went over with a bunch of jealous brothers? And then uh, Jacob made a coat of many colors. Uh, he didn't make all the brothers a coat. Uh, he just made the one a coat of many colors. You're talking about agitating uh, and uh, stirring things up. Amen. That's why you have to be careful as pastor. Amen. Uh, there's been a few times uh, I've tried to thank somebody for their hard work and somebody's too lazy, amen, to do anything for the church got mad because I didn't thank them for anything. Well, brother, they all know it's better than that. I, yeah, they ought to. Amen. And, you know, they wouldn't feel that way if they was thinking right. But the devil jumps right up on the shoulder, puts his lips right up in the ear, and goes to whispering. Your father never did kill the fatty calf for you. That's what he did to the prodigal son's son, the one who stayed home. He's went out and blowed all his money, lived like the devil, went wild. He ain't had no party for you. And as soon as he comes back, he forgets all them devilish things that he done. Amen. And his father tried to make him understand, son, everything I've got is yours. But your brother was lost, and now he's found. Your brother was gone, but he's home now. Your brother was in harm's way, and now he's safe. I can't keep having a party. I didn't have to party over you, and everything I've got is yours. Because jealousy rose up in the story of the prodigal son and we see jealousy rose up the coat of many colors amen and then the dream that Joseph had man that just topped the cotton amen that was more than what they could stand amen they just couldn't take it anymore amen because amen that brother has been blessed and favored he's got a coat of his own and now then he's lifted himself up and told us we're going to bow down and serve him Ooh, I'd like to kill that rascal. How many had brothers and sisters? Amen. Did you know sometimes you just wanted to hug them and kiss them and love them and tell them how precious they are and play with their toys? Then there's other times you wanted to gouge your eye out. <laughs> there's other times you'd like to put your hand around their neck. Now, don't look at me like I'd have never wanted to choke my brother and sister. Liar. You know you'd like to choke them. You might not want you to kill them, but just have their eyes bug out for a couple hours. Amen. Know that you hurt a little bit. Amen. That would have given you a little bit of help. Well, Brother Jimmy, I never would have felt like that. I'm sorry. Amen. Maybe someday you'll come to the knowledge of truth and let you and let the Holy Spirit let you know we're all rotten without Jesus. And we've all had jealous notions and ideas. Amen. At one time or another. Now, I've got two sisters, and I, I don't want neither one of them to die, but there's been a time or two I'd love to choke them real good. I, t I heard this story of this family one time. They had this family member, and they were all swinging on a grapevine playing, and this one brother, uh, he was swinging on the grapevine, and, a and after a while that grapevine broke, and it fell, and it knocked the breath out of him, and he knocked him unconscious. They thought he was dead. So you know what they done? They covered him up with leaves and went and told Mama they didn't know where he's at. Thank God he come to himself, scratched out from all of them pile of leaves, uh, and went home in time for supper. But see, that's what brothers and sisters will do for you. Amen. I know they love you, but when it comes time to get in trouble, uh, amen, they may hightail it uh, and go over the hillside, uh, amen, to get away from you. Amen. His brothers uh, come against him. Uh, amen. We can look here now. In, in uh, uh, Genesis 37, 24, amen, he was thrown into the pit. Uh, amen. There may be some of you, amen, that feels like you've been thrown into the pit. The Lord saved you. Your family was so moved. Uh, amen. Because God, he came into your life. Uh, you changed your lifestyle. Everything was different. And uh, those that are saved or they just made over you because that you have been born again by the Spirit of God and then next thing you know you feel like you've been thrown into the pit you lost your job there's no money coming in your friends amen they used to be around you they're so busy in their own things they don't have time amen to listen to you or talk to you or help you through the situation amen or maybe that your wife or your husband is excuse me <coughs> having to work some different hours and you feel like that they just really don't have time for you isn't it amazing how the devil will put stuff in your head? You can have somebody, amen, that you really love, uh, and they're going through a time, uh, you know, where that they don't feel good, or they're going through a time where they're having to work extra hours, and they just don't have the time to call you or send you an email, maybe like that they once did, uh, and the devil puts it in your head. You've been cast down by that person. They don't like you anymore. That's all there is to it. They don't have time for you. They've already found them a new friend. And they like that new friend better than you. 
And that's not so. It's just that's what the devil does uh, to instigate, uh, amen, and to try to cause you to believe, uh, amen, you've been thrown into the pit, uh, and there's where you're going to stay. The title of the message today, if I ever get around to it, uh, amen, is coming out of the pit. Uh, amen, thank God we could come out of that pit. Amen, the devil's going to throw you in one. Uh, your friends, uh, and sometimes just the world itself, uh, amen, will throw you into the pit. Uh, amen, but if you live for God uh, while you're in the pit, uh, you'll still find favor, amen, while you're going through the fire, amen, while you're down in the pit uh, and it's dark uh, and it's lonely and there's nobody else around. Oh, what a time, amen, in your life when you get to that place, uh, amen, you feel like you're in a pit. Brother Jimmy, did you ever feel like that for 10 years? I did. 10 years went through that. It's hard. But I'm going to tell you what. When you come out of the pit, you say, woo-wee. Man, the sun shines brighter than it ever has before. Now, sin didn't put me into the pit. Jealous brothers did. Not my, I don't have any physical brothers. But I'm talking about jealous brothers and sisters. I put me into the pit. Amen. They aim to kill me and to destroy me. But God would come and financially pull me through every time that I run out of money. And every time that I got to work, couldn't take it anymore, I'd steal away and pray. And I'd tear the carpet up in that house up here on the hillside that I lived in and have me a shouting time. And I said, well, praise God. I feel like I got a million on my side. There ain't nobody here. Just me and Jesus. And the Lord helped me and brought me through the time. Amen, that I was in the pit. Amen, any of y'all ever been in a pit? Amen, if you ever lost your job? Amen, or lost your spouse? Maybe your spouse died and you feel like you was lonely? Amen, and you was by yourself and you had some times of discouragement and depression? Amen, it may last for a long time. It may last for a short time. But during that time, God's going to be with you. Jesus said, Lo, I'll be with you always, even unto the end of the world. You hear me, and you hear me well when the church goes through things uh, don't you ever forget uh, Jesus is with you uh, he loves the church you're blessed and highly favored even if it looks like you've been cast down and all your friends has told you that the Lord's dropped you and left you and it looks like that nobody is going to pick you up amen now, the first thing that happens when you get into the pit, you feel like the Lord's going to come through with a miracle. And you run to the mailbox every day thinking, here comes the check. And there's nothing in there but a roach and maybe a ladybug. And every now and then, a brown recluse spider. And you think, that wasn't what I was expecting. I was expecting a check. I heard the preacher say on television, if I'd send, oh, man. If I'd send in money that uh, there'd just be so much money to roll in, I'd have to put it in two or three different banks. Nothing came in. I'm here in the pit. Lost my job. I tried and there's no word. They will hire me. Just hang on in the pit, honey. The Lord is going to come through for you if you will not faint. Amen. If you will never fail. Amen. To, to pray and to believe and wait upon God. Amen. And you may have lost. Amen. Your, your spouse may have lost your job. And then again, you may have bad health. I'm going to stay on this subject for just a moment or two. Amen. They don't, nobody know how good your hell, how blessed you are to have health until your health starts failing. When your health starts failing, you realize you can't do what you once did. Amen. The devil's going to jump on you and say, you're half a man, boy. You're half what you used to be. You know what I tell the devil? I said, yeah, but I'm going to take this half and keep hopping for Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to take this half and use for everything I got until I get so tired I can't handle it. I take me a nap, get up the next morning, and I'm going to be the biggest threat that hell's ever had with just a half a man. Now, devil, you're going to have to get over that. Amen. I'm not going to be defeated. I'm not going to stop. Yesterday evening, my wife said, why don't you rest? You don't ever rest. I said, I can either rest out or wear out, and I choose to wear out. I don't want to sit around and rust out. Amen. What are you trying to say? I'm going to preach. I'm going to work. There's going to be something for this old boy to do as long as I can walk, as long as I can crawl. If I can't walk and I can't crawl, just roll me in on a gurney, crank that thing up to my head, gets above the pillow, give me a microphone, and I'll preach to the multitudes. 
Amen. There's no place to stop. There's no place to quit. As long as there's lost people, uh, backslid people, uh, hurting people, uh, amen, we need to be uh, carrying the word. Uh, amen. Your health, uh, amen, may have you down. Uh, your health, uh, amen, may have hindered you and caused you multiple problems. Uh, amen. But God will give you grace. Uh, he'll give you mercy. And it don't matter what the devil's attacked you with. Uh, just keep praying for better health uh, and limp on, child, with what you got. Amen. I thank God for people that have come to church in wheelchair. We got two in the aisles right here this morning, sitting here in wheelchairs. There's some people would have stuck out their bottom lip, laid home in the bed, pulled a sheet over top of their head, and felt sorry for themselves. But I'm thankful that they got up and wanted to come to the house of God because they love Jesus. Amen. Now, what's your excuse and why didn't you come? Ooh. Never thought about that. It's kind of rough, but you'll get over it. Amen. If you ever been through a church split, if you ever went through hard times, uh, amen, when you felt like you was rejected, uh, amen, but people, what happens when you get rejected? Uh, that's the most terrible feeling that you'll ever experience in your life is this feeling of being rejected. Jesus looked, uh, amen, and he stood and he looked over Jerusalem and he said this, Oh, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, how often would I have gathered you as a hen would gather your, her brood under her wings, and ye would not. Amen. He was heartbroken. He was depressed. He was discouraged. He came to teach. And many walked away and wouldn't listen and wouldn't believe. He came to offer help. Amen. To the helpless and the hopeless. And some said, is this not uh, the son of Joseph the carpenter. This is not anything big. Uh, he's just a common man that played ball with my boys. Uh, what's the big to do over oh, this man that claims to be a prophet? Uh, amen. He brought, uh, amen, healing. Uh, he brought salvation. He brought deliverance, the ability to cast out spirits uh, and deliver people from demonic forces. Uh, amen. And people would not listen. Uh, he came to heal and to save the multitudes and the handful believed. Uh, and the multitude walked away and he looked at Jerusalem and thought you're the reason why I came to this world uh, was to bleed and to die for you. There's nothing more I could do for you. And as a hen gathers her brood under her wings, uh, I would have protected you with the very essence of my life. Uh, and all that heaven has uh, would have been at your uh, fingertips uh, if you would have walked with me and believed. But you wouldn't allow me to come into your life and change you. Oh, won't that preach today? Amen. I'm preaching to thousands on television and radio. Uh, amen. Every week right now, I'm uh, crying out to the people here at the Shepherd's House Church. Uh, I'm uh, begging people, believe. Uh, cry out to the Lord. And some are believing. Amen. Every now and then we see somebody saved. I, I get calls from people. I, amen. For prayer. And I thank God for that. And I see people hear people's lives being touched. Uh, but the multitudes are saying, yep, that was pretty good. Let's flip her over on Bugs Bunny now. I've got something else on my mind. I'm not ready to quit my sinning uh, and change my life. I know that's what I need to do. But I don't believe I'm ready to follow Jesus. The devil has them blinded, uh, amen, and the feeling of being rejected is one of the most terrible feelings. Uh, Jesus went through it. If you are a minister and you're watching me on television or listening to me on my radio, I want to give you some words of encouragement. If you've been rejected and if you're preaching the gospel, you have been, or you need to knuckle down and go to preaching the truth uh, so you can be rejected. If you're telling the people what they want to hear, they're going to love you and kiss on you and fill your pockets full of money. You tell them the truth, they'll be after you with a rolling pin. They'll try to starve you out, run you out, pray you out, move you out. Amen. They'll do anything short of killing you. They'd do that if they thought the government wouldn't get them. Amen. Paul said that one time you would have plucked your eye out and gave it to me. But now because I tell you the truth, you seek to kill me. Why? Because he gave them the unadulterated truth, the full gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. When you tell people what they want to hear, they'll bless you. When you tell them they need to repent, they're going to say, who do you think you are? I don't feel like repenting. I hadn't done anything wrong. I'm good. I may lie a little, cuss a little, steal a little, lust after everybody's wife or husband, but I'm a pretty good boy most of the time. Amen. And I just don't believe I'm going to repent. I just don't like that scenario. I like just being me the way I've always been. Amen. Mm-hmm. 
In Genesis 37, 28, uh, he was sold into slavery. Amen? Listen, there's nothing any more hurtful than not only having somebody uh, not come by and get you, but when somebody finally did come and deliver you, it's just so they could uh, cause you to be a slave. Uh, he was sold into slavery, wound up being in charge of the Ishmaelites, had him. Amen? But you know what? God just kept uh, uh, letting him find favor. I'm going to talk to some of you today that's in slavery. Amen? If you're uh, hooked on... Uh, <laughs> On prescription drugs, you've been made a slave to the pharmaceutical companies. Sorry. Amen. Now, I know there's some drugs you have to have. I understand that. Amen. But there's some drugs you can do without. And there's some drugs the doctors, uh, amen, don't need to put you on. And then you've got some that started out doing the right thing uh, and that went through a hard time. Uh, and because that they didn't pray and they didn't uh, seek the face of God, uh, amen, uh, at church or with others, or they didn't call the pastor for counseling uh, and try to get help through the situation, they turned uh, to illegal drugs because they knew somebody that had some and they got hooked on that mess uh, and it took them down. They went into slavery. Amen. They were under control. Amen. Of a substance. Amen. That's so demanding. Amen. You got to have me or I'll not make you. will never be happy until you give me more of me. Go buy more. If you don't have money, borrow it. If you can't borrow it, then steal it. But get it and you'll never be happy until you can get another high off of me. You went right in to slavery. Amen. There's other people. Amen. This went into slavery in other ways. Uh, amen. Where they've been addicted. Uh, amen. To habits. And where they've been uh, addicted. Uh, amen. But things that they don't need to be connected with uh, in the first place. I'm going to say something to some of you that's been uh, absolutely uh, overwhelmed. Uh, amen. With pornography and things. I'm going to tell you something. We're living in a time right now. Amen. Anything that you want, you can get it. Every kind of pornography, ungodly stuff that uh, can be thought of. It's at your fingertips. Tips. Uh, almost every home's got a computer in it and, and or a television. And what you can get on the television, you can order it, uh, amen, on the Internet if you want that mess. And I've heard, I've never been addicted to that stuff, but I've heard it's like a fire that burns in your soul if you ever start it, uh, that you can't stop from getting more and more and more. You'd be surprised at the people that attend church across America today, amen, that's hooked on that stuff. They don't nobody know it. Oh, no, they wouldn't let you know it. Amen. They hide their Playboy magazines. Amen. <laughs> they, they try to keep their husband or their wife, amen, from finding out what they've been looking at uh, through the search engine uh, on the Internet and what kind of websites that they've been on. Uh, they don't want anybody to know it because it's embarrassing. But they're hooked on it. Uh, they tell themselves every week, now this is the last time uh, I'll ever do that. You won't catch me on this website anymore and the next week amen by the middle of the week the pressure gets worse and worse and worse and worse uh, to finally before the end of the week uh, they'll say well I said last week's my last week but I mean it this time this week is definitely my la not my last week and they'll go through that situation praying and asking God to help them. The next week, they'll start out the same thing again. And finally, by the end of the week, they said, I said the week before last was my last one. Last week, I was serious. Now then, I'm demanding it, buddy. I'll never get on this my last time just one more time. See how the devil brings deception uh, and lies instead of trying to find help. Uh, amen. In a minute, this is not something you need to stand up in front of the church and tell everybody I'm full of lust and I'm hooked on pornography. I wouldn't do that. I go to the pastor and say, look, I got something I need to talk to you about after church. And I won't talk to you about this in confidentiality. I need prayer. I need help. I prayed and I prayed, but I need somebody to hold me accountable to this. I need somebody I can talk to that will hold me accountable, that I can report into, that's going to ask me whether or not I've got that spirit broke off of me. There's some people, amen, they have good intentions, but they never get those spirits broke off of them. It's a habit. It's a burning lust. It, 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 it controls. They become a slave, amen, to sex addiction. Amen. That it feels like they can't have a, a, a whole week and they can't feel like they can be at their best and they can't function right if they can't have some of this. Amen. You need to get help. Amen. Well, Jimmy, you're embarrassing me to death. I don't mean to embarrass you. I want you to get help. Amen. You need to be delivered from that. Because I'm going to tell you what will happen. That's going to get worse and worse and worse. The next thing you're going to be doing, you're going to be reaching out and trying to touch somebody in the wrong place. Amen. Or talk to somebody with a lustful uh, vocabulary. Amen. And then their husband's going to punch your eye. Amen. My wife's husband would. Amen. 
I'm glad I can punch you in the eye and ask God to forgive me. Amen, because that's what I do. I dot your eye in a hurry. You leave my wife alone, amen. I can tell you that right now. Amen, she'll set you in the right place but, and, and protect you from me if she can. If you wouldn't do the same thing, you ain't worth a nickel. Amen, she needs to get her a real man that will love her. Oh, me. Genesis 37, 31 through 35 tells us, uh, amen, here that he was dead. The report was, uh, amen, you know what they done? They, they took Joseph's coat uh, of many colors uh, and they killed a kid uh, and they took that blood and they put it on uh, the coat and they took it back to, to Jacob, their father, and said, look, uh, we found his coat here. And Jacob thought that some wild animal had killed his son uh, and he mourned uh, and the lie was told on him that he's dead. Uh, amen. Sometimes people will say, well, your ministry's over with. Uh, Bo Jim could really preach at one time. <laughs> but he done had so much hit him, he's just not what he used to be. I believe he's just about dead. Uh, amen. Some people may tell you when our old sister Sadie, she used to can sing. Uh, oh, she can ring the rafters. But now then, it looks like she can't get a hold of anything much. Uh, oh, it looks like her better days over with. Uh, it's time for her to park her Cadillac of singing uh, out behind the church and let some of the younger ones see if they can get that high note uh, that she used to get. Uh, amen. The report is that you're on your way down. Uh, the report is that you're about dead. Uh, the report is you'll never rise anymore. Uh, amen. The report was you've lost your son. Uh, you'll never hear from Joseph anymore. But see, that was far from the truth. Uh, amen. God still had his back. Uh, he was still, uh, amen, uh, in trouble. Uh, he got out of the pit, went into slavery, amen, but God allowed him to find favor, amen, with everybody, everywhere he went, and God continued to carry him, but the report was, amen, that you're not going to make it, amen, a few years ago, the report was, we'll never get this church paid for out here, all the tithers left, two more years next month, and we'll have her paid for, never missed a payment. It's got rough a few times, but we've always made it, uh, amen, through every situation. Amen, the ones that says they'll never make it, uh, I just stand on the front porch and wave at them as they go down the road. Uh, amen, we're here. Amen, we're not putting hay in it. Uh, amen, we didn't tear it off to hang tobacco in it. Uh, amen, it's still a church. We're alive. Uh, amen, and now we're reaching the world uh, through Internet and television, uh, getting ready to start live streaming here before long. Uh, amen, if I can't get them to come in here, uh, I'll reach them by the multitudes because I ain't dead. It just told that we did. It just told that you out of sight. Amen. Just told that you're on your way down. Sometimes we have to go through a time, amen, where God's a chipping on us. Any y'all ever been chipped on? Amen. The Lord has to take that hammer and that chisel and chip the things he don't like, amen, about us out. And sometimes he has to find out whether or not are you serious about this or are you just one of them others that wants to run their lip. Can I go ahead and say this? I don't know how many people love to run their lip and tell how much they love the Lord. Amen. And the first trial that comes up, you know the which one is to have their tail between their legs headed across the parking lot. Amen. But those that's really serious, they find the pearl a great price. They'll take a licking and keep on ticking. And when the devil comes against the church, they'll say, uh-uh, devil. Ain't going to happen. I'll pay above and beyond my tithes. I'm behind this, and I'll go more than I ever went. Uh-uh. You ain't going to bring us down. And others will just say, oh, if they have a hard time, what if I have to wind up paying for that thing myself, and I can't pay anymore? I got all these bills now. I heard people say that years ago. We had a church split, and so I don't know how in the world they'll pay for that big building. We ain't. God's paying for it. Amen, but we all worked together and prayed and the money come in. We got to, can I, I need to preach this for about two hours. I'm trying to hurry this up. And I know I don't have just so much time on the radio and so much time on television. You'll just have to edit out and chop it off and you'll just have to order the DVD <laughs> if you want the full version later. Amen. But you know what? A few years ago, we got down to where we didn't hardly have anything. I mean, we got in one of the worst financial shapes that any church would want to get in. Amen. Just got right down. I said, Lord, I don't know what we're going to do this time. It's about it. And I had a dream. And in that dream, the Lord sent an old man with white hair and a walking stick. And in that dream, there was a table between me and him. And he walked up to that table and he handed me this. It looked like either a check or a deed or something. And he said, I said, uh, what is this? And he said, 
uh, the Lord said, give this to you. He said, this is not for you, this is for the church. And I said, are you sure? And he said, it's already done. And I woke up. I didn't see his face. I just seen white hair and a walking cane. I thought, well, we're going to get some money in the mailbox. Uh-uh. I went every day and didn't get nothing. I thought, well, we'll have a new church member come in here Sunday morning, and they're going to give a love offering out of this world. Nope. Lowest love offering we had. <laughs> that sure didn't go along with that. what I thought was a prophetic dream. And then finally on about Thursday of that week, the telephone rung. And they said, Brother Jimmy, you're going to be at the church today? I said, I'm going to Tompkinsville. I'll be back about 4 o'clock. Be back up to church about 4 o'clock this evening. So they turned around and asked their husband. They said, is, is Brother Jimmy will be there at 4 o'clock? He said, 4 will be fine. Tell him I'll meet him there. I said, okay, see you, Brother Jimmy, and hung up. I thought, oh, what have I done now? All day long, I thought, well, I'm going to get another chewing. Anybody's pastor to church a while, you've been in a Sunday school room or in your office and had somebody attack you. And I thought, oh, I'm, I just I can't handle another attack. I, I just don't need this right now. Lord, help me. And I told Jenny, I said, I don't know what this is about. I guess I'll find out at 4 o'clock this evening. So all day long, I wondered about that. And 4 o'clock, I came out to the church, and there was an autom automobile sitting on the back porch back here next to the fellowship hall. I, I got out of my car, and the door opened. I, they got out, and there was an old man with white hair and a walking cane. And it didn't hit me that it was going to be just like the dream that I had. I went on inside the church, and he sat down on one side of the table <laughs> and me on the other side. I still didn't get it. Had his hands up on top of that walking stick, just like this right here, talking to me. We talked about the weather and different things. And all at once he said, now, Brother Jimmy, I'm just going to tell you why I'm here. I thought, oh, Lord Jesus, help me. He said, the Lord woke me up this morning and told me to make an offering to this church. I said, well, Brother, if that's what you feel like you need to do, and he reached in his pocket pulled out this check that was already filled out, and he said, it's already done. I said, oh, my goodness. And he laid it on the table, $15,200. I had to look at it the first, and I said, it's $150? $1,500? I thought, surely it ain't $1,500. So I got my glasses out. Ah! Amen. Pulled us out. We could stay on television. Paid our bills. Amen. And see, we've had one thing right after another while we were in the pit, while we are under slavery of a heavy debt. Amen. God just kept sending favor, just kept blessing. I don't know who I'm preaching to today, but I'm preaching to somebody that's going through something. And I'm here to tell you, God's got your back. Don't you back up. Don't you get discouraged. God's got the plan. He knows exactly where you're at. He knew you was going to go into the pit before you were ever thrown into the pit. He knew you was going to be sold into slavery, but he's got a plan. He's going to lift you up. And what he gave you a dream of, amen, just keep on dreaming because he's going to lift you higher than anybody in the land before long. Ooh. Hang on just a minute. Excuse me. Woo! Hallelujah. I'm glad today that God has a way of bringing us out. Amen. Of every situation that we're going through. Amen. Hope I didn't offend anybody, but you'll get over it in a few days. If you've been where I've been and you where I am at right, right now, you'd want to dance and shout too. <laughs> Because I'm going to tell you, amen, he's a good God to serve. Amen, I'm glad I can feel his presence. And even when I'm being kicked, amen, the Lord just kept saying, I love you. I love you. I'm going to bless you, amen, to the day that he brings you out. Amen, Brother Jimmy. God's brought you out of the pit, and God's sending you around the world with the gospel. What's your enemy's going to do? They're going to criticize, find fault, have something smart to say about it. Guarantee you. Stake your life on it, amen. It's a coming, amen. But I'm just going to keep on the preaching on, amen. Just keep on winning the souls. Just keep on, amen, one TV station after another, one radio station after another, amen, because it's done been prophesied that the, that the gospel and the ministry of this church shall reach the four corners of the earth, amen. That was prophesied years ago right here in this church for Brother Mike Shrum when he was preaching revival. And I thought, how in the world? There's no way I can ever go to the four corners of the earth. Well, I've done went to two of them. I'm headed for the other two now. Mm. I got a report this morning that our radio program is going into 141 different countries. Amen. I ain't got to all 400 of them yet, but we headed there. 
Amen. And the prophecy wasn't that we go to all 400 countries. It is said to the four corners. We can go to four, four countries. Amen. One in each corner. Wouldn't that be four corners? If I was you and all I see God's doing, I'd be getting ready to meet God. Amen. Amen. All right, Genesis 39, verse 1 says, And Joseph was brought down to Egypt, and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh, captain of the guard, an Egyptian, bought him of the hands of the Ishmaelites, which had brought him down thither. Ain't you glad that the Lord's always got a way to prosper you and got a way when he starts bringing you out? Amen. You're going to come out in such a way that it amazes you how he brings you out, and then he's going to lift you up. Amen. There was still a long time, amen, before Joseph ever made it to the top. Amen. But God was a bringing him out. Amen. Amen. Praise God. In Genesis 39, 2 through 4, amen, the Lord caused him to prosper. Amen. No matter how many times that enemy tries to attempt to bring you down, God's going to cause you to prosper. Amen. In Genesis 39, 19, through 20, he was cast into prison because of lies that was told on him. Amen. His master's wife wanted to lay with him. And because that he wouldn't, amen, he, he left his garment there and she false accused him. And her, her, her husband had him thrown into jail and he was because he was false accused. But aren't you glad when you get in jail, even the, uh, the prison keeper is on your side. Amen. I've seen, I, I can't go through all the stories of all the things, uh, amen, that's happened to me where the devil tried to trap me and get me in trouble. But I've always been able to find favor, amen with somebody, somewhere God would have them there, amen, to bring me out of every situation. Uh, amen. In Genesis 29, uh, 39, 21, uh, through Genesis 44, amen, he found favor with the, uh, with the prison keeper. And, and you know what? You'll find out, uh, amen, that you'll have more friends, uh, amen, when you get in a hardship than you ever realized you'd ever have. And when the devil tells you that nobody loves you, you'll have people coming out of the woodwork, uh, amen, telling you that I like you, I love you, I'm behind you, and I'm praying for you. Amen. Genesis 40, verse number 12. Uh, amen. God uses him while he's still in ward uh, to interpret dreams. Uh, aren't you glad? Uh, amen. You may be put in captivity. Amen. But God's gifts and callings uh, and the abilities that God gave you are still being used uh, for the glory of God. Can I say this about the Apostle Paul? The Apostle Paul got thrown into prison in one place for a period of about two years. And during that time, he couldn't go out and minister anywhere. He was bound. And you know what? People started coming to him. He got to preaching in the gospel, laying hands on them. He found favor with the prison keepers. Uh, and no telling how many thousand got saved uh, during that two-year period. Uh, and Paul was in a prison cell, and he won thousands to the Lord. Amen. Just because you're in captivity, just because you've been hindered, uh, it doesn't mean that your calling, uh, it doesn't mean that your gifting uh, cannot be reawakened, uh, recharged, uh, and reused for the glory of God and probably be better than it ever was before. Praise God. Amen. I'm going to finish up here in a minute. Well, Genesis 45, 1 through 9. After the famine, he revealed himself, uh, amen, to his brothers and to his father. Let them know, it's me, it's Joseph, I'm not dead. There's a famine in the land, and I stored up all this grain, and now then, I'm going to give to you, and I'm going to bless you. And see, what they didn't understand in the dream, Joseph was going to be above them, and all the others are going to serve him, but Joseph was going to give them love. And they didn't understand because God was going to lift him up. And see, Joseph's brothers didn't go through everything that Joseph went through. See, if you've never been through something, you don't know what I'm talking about. If you've never went through a hard time, you won't appreciate what God's done for you. And I'm going to say this to some of the preachers today. We can't never preach to somebody else till we first lived it. We can tell them the fundamentals of the gospel, the basics on how to get saved, but you can never minister to the broken until you first get broken yourself. And I wish everything I went through I didn't have to go through, but I'm going to tell you what. It's brought me to who I am today, and it's made a better man out of me. And if I had to go back all over life and choose, I'd say I hate this, but I'm going to have to choose to go through it again. Amen, because I can never be where I am today if I hadn't went through what I went through. And because
because I held on to the faithful Savior. And now that he's blessed me because I've been faithful over a few things. Now what are you trying to say? I'm going to say this by, by ending the, the message today. If you're in this thing for the short haul, you're going to be in and out, in and out, up and down. You know what you need to do? You need to find out where you are supposed to be, find you a seasoned pastor, and say, I'm home. If the church catches on fire, I'll burn up with it. If the pastor cuts and bleeds, I'm going to bleed with him. If I have to spend money, if the pastor spends money and spends money and gives and gives and gives and gives, I'm going to dish her out too. But I'm home. This is where I'm going to stay. And if he makes me so mad that I, that I get cross-eyed, <laughs> I'm going to go home and pray till I get over it. And I'll be back tonight because I'm home. I'm going to stay there. And I'm going to believe in the ministry. And I'm going to believe in Jesus. And I'm going to hang on. It don't matter what ISIS is doing. Can I? And I know there's people in ISIS that will, no doubt is watching me that have to. There's many places that we're going right now. But I'm going to tell you something. I want to share with you some good news. I went to the revival. Brother Tommy Bates and him and Brother John Parrish both were telling stories about what's going on in Iraq right, right now. There was a Christian news journalist let this leak out, and, and, and Iraq don't want this to be told. But there's people are converting from Islam to Christianity right now by the thousands. Oh, all right, I hope you enjoyed the program uh, today. hope that it was a blessing to you. Um, we are depending on contributions from people like you that watches the program, that likes the program, to send money in to keep this on the air. Um, those that um, are led of the Lord to give, I'm going to tell you a, a couple of ways that you can send money in. The first way is you can send your check or money order uh, to Jimmy Wilson Ministries, Post Office Box 1346, Glassville, Kentucky, and that's uh, 42142. Again, that's Jimmy Wilson Ministries, one Post Office Box 1346, Glasgow, G-L-A-S-G-O-W, Kentucky, 42142. Or you can log on to our church's website at www.theshepherdshouse.net. And you can click on the Donate button, and it'll run it through PayPal, which is one of the most trusted services um, that, that we have in America. And uh, I think everything will be fine. And Or you can, uh, if you don't have Internet, you can give us a call. And we'll be, someone will be on the phone, and uh, we'll have the capability of running that, your debit card or credit card, uh, through uh, that way if we need to. And uh, here's some things that I wanted to share with you out of the Word of God. We need to take our, our tithes into the storehouse, which is our home church, and then your offerings can go to other ministries. And, and Luke chapter 6, verse 38 says, Give, and it shall be given unto you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Men shall give into your bosom, for with the same measure that you met, with all it shall be measured to you again. Malachi 3, verse 10 says, Bring all the tithes into the storehouse, that there may be meat in mine house, and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven, and pour you out a blessing, that there shall not be room enough, to receive it, and I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he shall destroy the fruits, he shall not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, saith the Lord of hosts. If you believe in this ministry, then uh, we're going to pray that you will help support this ministry. And I've had several that sent in um, one time offerings, and that's good, we appreciate that, but in order uh, to really keep the ministry going, we really need to have a continuous um, uh, coming in of, of what we can get each month. And I appreciate the ones. We have a few that does give uh, the same thing and sometimes even extra than what they normally give each month, and that uh, helps carry the load so we're able to do what we're doing. Right now, we're on uh, TV in Scottsville, Kentucky, which goes into southern Kentucky and northern Tennessee areas. And then we're on in Chicago, MCTV, which goes into um, the Chicago, Illinois area, into Indiana, 
into Michigan and Wisconsin. So uh, we praise the Lord in parts of those states. We praise the Lord for that. Now we're also on HLE Radio uh, that uh, is on uh, twice per week, and um, that goes out to several people there that way. In fact, it goes into 139 countries there. So, And then we've got our church's website. We've got archives uh, there where we've got several of the sermons over the last few uh, several weeks that's posted there, and you can view that and, and watch some of the sermons there at any time at your leisure. So we're getting out the best we can, as fast as we can, trying to reach as many people as we can, and uh, we need your support to help us reach those people. You pray about it and be led of the Lord. I'm not a prosperity preacher. I'm not going to make you promises that you're going to get rich or your boyfriend or girlfriend is going to come back and make up with you. I, I'm not making you promises like that, but I will tell you, if you'll sow seed in this ministry, the Lord will bless you, and if you'll help me reach the multitudes, if we don't reach for one soul and keep them out of hell, it'll be worth every bit of the effort and all the money that we all could give. God bless you. Pray about giving. Be led of the Holy Spirit. Support your home church first. God bless you.